All right, it's about five o'clock. Logan and I are going back to that spot that we hunted a few nights ago. Saw two nice bucks in there. We're gonna go check it out, feel it out, and decide what to do from there. Truck fan ball on the loose. Greg's going out with the longbow tonight. He's going to a piece that he's been scouting for quite a while now. So hope we're going to a good spot. We're a little bit nervous about it just because those guys were obviously driving in there. Don't really know. Oh, there's a turtle. Get out of here, guy. Just don't know if they've been in there too much to be pressuring the spot or not. My gut's telling me that it's telling me a couple things. Like we should go in there and check it, but I'm a little bit nervous because I don't want to waste a hunt in a spot where there's not any deer. Regardless, we're gonna hunt back in this spot, but we might just try to figure out more about it and kind of skip that bedding area if it doesn't feel right. Kind of looks like people have been driving back here today. Not a good sign. I guess we can go up there and feel it out and get up to that spot where we were and we can decide if we want to go to the west or to the east around that bedding area. See if we see anything down in there, throw a little milkweed along the way, see what we see. And Logan and I are going back to the spot where we jumped that big buck from the vehicle the other day. There was at least two shooters using that bedding area. One of the problems with this spot and is making us kind of unsure is there's this access path that goes right through the middle of this property. And that's what we were driving on when we spooked that buck. It is legal to drive on this road and people have been doing that. We've been seeing a group come in and out of here. I'm worried that when the traffic started increasing, it kind of bumped those deer out of this bedding area. You know, obviously if nobody's hunting here, and it's just the cattle farmers going back and forth every once in a while. When they see that influx of pressure, people driving in and out of here every day all of a sudden, I'm worried that that's gonna bump them up and out of here. I'm just not sure. It's hard to tell. Maybe those guys haven't been in here in two days. Maybe they've been in here every day. It's hard to, it's hard to tell. I'm looking at the tracks, and then we're gonna peek at the bedding area just like we did the other day. I'm gonna crawl up to the top, peek down in there, see if we can see some deer. If we see deer, then we'll feel more confident about it and maybe try to pick up a different plan. I got up here about 100 yards from where we did that interview, and these tire tracks stopped. There's nothing but deer tracks, really, on top of the old tracks. Now, I don't know, this looks like it had to have just happened, but these guys must have pulled in, backed out over there, and then left. If you look at these tracks right here, those are on top of old tire tracks. The newest tire tracks are right there and they turned around. So maybe nobody's been all the way to the back of this thing today. There's a good one back there, bedded, right on the edge of that bedding area. Right by the creek back there, there's a real nice buck, bedded like 70 yards away. Yep. Give me that camera. I'm gonna go up there and crawl up and film him and just try to make somewhat of a plan. All
between there and that little patch of willows. Right, I can just see his antlers sticking up. He's pretty tough to see, but every once in a while the sun glows on him. Okay, his antlers are right in the center of the screen right there. Do you see him? Right there? Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm going to zoom out and just remember that spot. Okay. You got it? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to grab my bow and just going to start crawling. Crawl. I'm going to ditch everything else because we don't have a lot of time. I don't know yeah. how long he's going to stand up. So this buck is right at the end of those willows over there. Right at the end of that's that cedar. And he's right off that point. I'm gonna have to be super quiet from here on out. I've got this little bit of a barrier here. With these willows between me and him. And the wind's just coming right up this little valley. He's bedded facing the other way. So as long as I go slow enough, I should be able to get up here get close to him. I got just a little bit of a breeze to cover my sound and my movement.
I smoked him. I mean, it was. Is he down? I never he's saw down, dude. He's pumping. Dude. Oh my god. He's toast. Logan, <laughs> it's the big one, dude. I know. It's the big one. That was the same one from the other night. Dude, you know what? I was like, I I'm gonna. In on it. I'm like, I think that's him. Dude, that little one came out. You, were you, he, he had to be right next to you. I couldn't see you. Did but... I see him? He was seven yards across the Were you the gonna creek? shoot that one? No. Did you see that other one? <laughs> yeah. He's but... a tank, dude. <laughs> you kidding me? I had him dead. It was no, 19 you yards from I, I, I glassed him right there. I actually pulled binos up, threw sand directly in my eyes. Two binos up and just saw blood all over me. Dude, I smashed him, dude. My first ever stock on a white tail. That's the most incredible thing I've ever done hunting. That's wild. You know what we gotta do? Call Greg. Call the Gregster. He's gonna be. He's gonna be losing. Just scroll down. He's gotta be on there. He's right here. There's a bunch of rubs in this little patch right here, so no doubt bucks moved through here at some point. Let's hope this is a phone call from Zach. Logan, this has got to be good news. Okay. Yo, I got the camera rolling. You got some good news? I don't know. I was thinking about seeing if you wanted to go home tomorrow. You got one, didn't you? <laughs> I smoked the big 10 pointer, 19 yards, crawled to him in his bed. Yeah. It's a big 10, dude. dude. It's the big one that we jumped over here. He's roasted. Unbelievable. He's big, dude. Like, he's not, like, he's not small. He's big. He's big. He's real nice. That is epic. After this morning, man, after all this stuff that's happened, like, I mean, I don't know what to do. Like, I figure we gotta just go get him. Like, he's. Uh, man, I want to be there so bad. You got good life. Congrats, dude. <laughs> Thanks, man. My mind. I know. I'm. So, I'm sorry that. I'm sorry that. Like, you're so far away. I wish you could come. To, I wish you could come trailing with us, cause like, it just like it's. It's so wild. All right. Well, we're gonna take you back through kind of what I did here go for a little walk, show you where I was, show you where he was, go look at the arrow, and go find this thing while we still got light, because I'm pretty sure he's 10 ringed. So I spotted him here the first time. You can see where Logan was set up. And I got to looking at it, and just the way that the wind was blowing and the way he was looking, you know, we pretty much just figured, hey, we can make a move on this deer. So I crawled behind this bank a little bank right here. And I was just staying in the, in the tire track there. Like staying as low as possible. Talk about getting sand in your pants, dudes. Sand in your binos, sand in your eyes, sand in your face. Right here is it got a little sketchy because I can see him plain as day and there's no road ditch right here. And I've, I mean, if I'd have got up this much, he'd have been able to see me sitting there. Cause he was right there. So I kept crawling, sand burrs, I'm talking cactus, I'm talking, whew. Got to here and I knew he couldn't see me. So I kept looking up trying to see some trails that were going in right here. And I was like, I tried like three things, but listen to how loud that is. And when you're in high intensity, you're like, that's gonna spook him so bad. I tried to go in here once, but then I realized that was too thick. So I crawled back out and then I just was like, who cares? Like he can't see me right here. So I walked straight down to this trail. And at this point, you know, he's right over there. He's 45 yards. The wind was still blowing pretty good. So I went like this. Like once I got through this nonsense, I'm talking, as slow as you possibly could imagine. I stayed about this level, still up on my feet, but just slowly moving my feet like this. I mean, it was grueling. I get hurt. Kept my body up through here, but again, that's my, I mean, that's my line to the buck. He's not able to see a whole lot right there. So I stayed up, again, not up, but like right about like this, and just making sure my bow, my ghillie suit didn't get caught on anything. I eventually got to this transition of where this willow and this little road vegetation here is and I got flat down on my belly and crawled right down a small deer trail here 
And what I was doing, just a quick example of what I was doing, I, would, I was laying flat on my belly and I would take this bow and I would just, when the wind would blow, I would just slowly mat that grass down like that. And then I would crawl up into that spot. It took a long time, but you can see the little trail I really matted down. I also, I also tried to stay in the low spots. Like you can kind of tell, just barely gets lower right in here, right in here. I crawled up to here and I couldn't see the buck. And I was laying right here and I was like, man, I'm getting pretty nervous, you know? Like, I don't know where he is. So I crawled down to here because I could see that there's a low spot here. I did a lot of mashing through here. Crawled to, to here and I was sitting right here for the longest time glassing that way and I couldn't see him. I was like looking off to the right. So finally, I just did one of these. Then my bow, I got my bow, an arrow knocked and I just kept setting my bow up further and I'd slowly peek around and all of a sudden, dude, he was literally in that hole right there. And I could see his head plain as day laying right there. And I sat here with my pin and my arrow on him like this and just did not move and that buck came right up to me and I never moved the whole time. So as soon as he stood up, he was looking right at me and I was like, well, it's literally now or never because if he's not in that hole, I don't have a shot. So I just drew her back. I really made sure I was on him. I think I got him, the gillies. He would have been bedded like right in there. That little buck came to right there. It's crazy. We're gonna have to go up. Man, they're hammering this stuff through here. Somewhere right in here is where he was bedded. There it is, that's gotta be the bed. I mean, look where I was from his bed. I was right up, zoom into that. Right there is where I was. He was facing, laying here in this bed facing this way and I knew his body was oriented this way because I could just see the top of his back and when he was bedded here he was looking this way then you kind of look over here but he was mostly doing this and then as soon as he stood up I already had a hole picked out through this stuff and he went and stood up broadside right there and I shot right through a little hole all right we're gonna just take up the trail here. I can already see blood actually, Logan. Some right there, a lot of it. Up here, there's, yeah. Look at there. Yeah, it's all over the place. There's some on that tree. There's some right here. Good bubbles in it. There's a lot of blood. How you feeling right now? Feeling pretty good. I felt good the whole time though. There's blood spraying. The whole bunch. Just an absolute ton, dude. Just a ton. Here's my arrow. Yep. Smoked. So it must have. Must have been an improvement. Uh -huh, just a touch. Just smoked. There's blood here. There's a bunch of blood. There's just blood everywhere. I'm not really concerned at all at this point. Yeah, I'm not worried at all. Like that's killer. I mean, it's really pumping and it's on both sides. Don't necessarily go right after him like this. I mean, it's been probably an hour already, but it's all over this. I mean, he, he's toast. Yep. The heck was that? What? Just jumped something. Oh yeah. I think he went right into that hole right there. So I'm just gonna walk straight to that. All right, here we go. We're going into the dark. Look at this, Logan. Look at all this blood on the pine cedar needle. Ready to crawl through more cedars. stand by that.
Did you see him? Yeah. He's in bad shape. We must have bumped him right there. But he didn't go far. Like, he's going to die real soon. I'm just really... Let's get out of here. Grant, okay. text me call him as soon as he can. Okay. So, I know. We got to get out of here. For a oh, time. yeah. More drama, huh? I mean, I hate it. I hate doing that. I just don't want to make him run into the sand hills and then who knows what happened. Let's get out of here. Like, I hate to see him you know, not die right away, like that really, really sucks. Cause like, in my heart, like he was dead. I mean, you know, you heard by my voice. Things have never changed, you know, it still sounds yeah. good though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't have that type of reaction if you don't see blood pouring yeah, out yeah. the back If you don't feel good about, about it. it. No. Yeah. You know, it's just one of those things, like your gut instinct, even my gut instinct last year when I shot the one on the ground, it was like, okay, that felt pretty good, but I'm like, we got to really make sure. This one, I'm like, yeah. he's toast. Like yeah. when you watch an arrow go in, from your perspective and it flies totally true, it hits the hole that you've, that you've planned on, like everything that I envisioned a million times sitting there is exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. We saw, saw him. him. We saw him. For All sure. right. So here's here's why something may have been funky. Watch this tree right here. Arrow hits it. No. Oh, yeah. Glances off. Mm -hmm. But that could be why it maybe it went down and Not angled leverage. down and away Never, from it's... where it entered. It looked like a clean arrow flight right into him, but oh, okay. uh, you would never notice that, and yeah. it may not have deflected it much, but mm -hmm. it probably did some a little bit even if it was just two inches it could have been the difference between neck and lungs and here let me show you the arrow real quick that's actually Do you have no tent the first two days, or are you just slipping here? No, nah, we didn't have a rain cover for the tent, so we were a little oh. nervous about that. All right, we have got Logan, Greg, Chance, and Brody, and we're headed back in. It's about 11.30 right now, and we all feel pretty confident about the fact that this buck's probably down. He was looking pretty bad, and that was three hours ago. It's been four hours since the shot know right where he went in so we're just gonna ease our way in there careful not to spook him we got the wind in our favor we watched the footage sounds good looks good I mean blood was good it's just not really sure what happened I guess we're gonna find out we're gonna learn something tonight that's for sure let's get after him about 100 yards from where we last saw him, and then he's probably another 60, 70 yards from that. So once we get up to that spot, we're probably just gonna have these guys hang back, and Greg and I will just go up alone, just to ease our way down there to where we saw him going to the Cedars, and hopefully he's laying right there. I'd say there's a decent chance, maybe he made it down to the creek, but I don't think he's gonna be far. There's something going on over there in that private land it's making a bunch of noise. I don't know if there's a tractor running or what the deal is, but sorry for the loud noises of engine. We're going in to find this buck. Right here, Greg. See that blood? Some up ahead, too. That's a pretty good sign, huh? back up on blood right about where we last saw him. That's a pretty good sign, we think. He went in somewhere right in there. There's a look at that blood right there, Greg. There's something right on that. Yeah, that's the creek right there.
easier to find blood now, too. There's for sure something like right there, you see that? Sure, looks like you'd have crossed, huh? Yeah, I Do you see him on the other side? I see legs on it right there. Oh, dude. <laughs> dude, buddy. <laughs> oh my gosh. We were standing beside him the whole time. Yeah. You want to talk about stressed out. <laughs> oh. I saw you fumbling with that camera. And yeah, I was like, yeah. he sees him. He sees him. Because I saw, I saw I that saw. little patch of grass, that hole over there. And I was like, could that be him? <laughs> dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting, I was starting to get that, like, oh no, like, what's going on here? Like, so, something's got to give. <laughs> Let's go get the boys, man. <laughs> yes. Mark my location. It's the beauty of Onyx. You can find yourself even in the dark. Literally, we are sitting right here, and I looked, I, I mean, we looked, I don't know how many times. And you just can't yeah, see him, those cattails. Yeah. Way. Cool. Well, let's go get those guys. I'm ready to get over there. Did he? Yeah. Well, they like. You sure? I'm pretty sure. Good job, dude. Good job. It's on the other side of the creek, though. Really? Yeah. We were worried there for a while. I was a little worried, too. It was taking longer than we thought. Well. We didn't really go that far. We were just going slow, slow. super slow. I mean, looking, looking, looking. Guys, literally the whole time, he's just like crazy. just across the <laughs> creek. And Greg starts kind of shuffling to the right. And I kind of look over. I see him fiddling with the functions of the camera real fast. I was like, I think he might see something that I don't. He just goes, Zach, I see legs right there. Have it, just see his legs. Yeah. But he's over there. <laughs> Let's go get him. What do you think? Yeah. Heck yeah. Oh, buddy. <laughs> Look where that exit is, man. Like, what the heck? He is a brute. Look at that. I mean, that is all that we could have asked for. More, way more than we could have asked for. <laughs> Somebody give me some high fives. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Look at his head on him, like. <laughs> I could just, I was sitting there watching him in that bed from this angle and he would turn and then I could see that that big forehead on him 
just out of velvet, still blood on oh, his I antlers. That right side, like. That's velvet right He's there, been I believe. Doing a little bit of rubbing. I wish, I wish that like, I like I said, I almost took a video with my cell phone, but I was like. It's like, you know what, as soon as I do that, he's going to just stand up and I'm going to be fumbling around and be like, I better just, Drop your phone. I better just get set up here and, and make a good, good clean shot and just sit there and focus on it. I just sat there and I envisioned it going through that little hole that I'd picked, like just nonstop, you know, mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I think that's important. Envision it with confidence, mm -hmm. you know, and, and just be real confident in what you're doing. And I think that goes a long way. I think envi really envisioning is a good, at least seems to work for me when yeah. I'm really envisioning, you know, performing well. A little it, bit. Mm -hmm. How long did it take from start, from when you saw him to when you got the probably shot? About, probably about two hours, yeah, I, would I would say. say 5.30 like, to 7.30. Like, I don't know, we pulled in and it's probably 15 minutes after that we seen him and the uh -huh. rest was just that stock. <laughs> I just looked at Logan and I was just like... <laughs> 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 it was like, see, that was the thing. I ranged the him, and he was at 70. And then I ranged that cedar, and I ranged a number of other cedars, and that, that cedar was the closest, was the best for the wind, and also was going to give me the most cover, I felt like. That sand burrs in my hands. It's worth it, though. Oh, yeah, it was oh, yeah, oh, totally, totally worth, worth it. it. Totally worth it. it comes full circle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's just a wild time. It's just weird, like there's just a little bit of velvet. And he was he was shed on the second day of season there. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask you, was he shed when you mm -hmm. seen him the first time? Uh -huh. Finding the hot sign, man. Like, even if you don't jump the buck, you Yesterday know, it's like just look for Irish. where like where they're at. Mm -hmm. You know, just look for the hot sign. I think the burrs are really funny, too. Yeah. Like, how yeah. sharp they are. You like, forget that they're, like, something that they rub down, Yeah, you know? mm -hmm. They're just, like, pointy. Those won't last very long once it starts. Mm -hmm. Right. It's super super thick right there and when he was laying there i could see every once in a while i could see like his eyes and the part of his nose Don't... dudes thanks for being here no problem man it's fun yeah i'm glad i'm really glad that you guys made it it's it's a lot more fun being at camp when there's just more and more people like i think obviously like us three being here was fun but just having more people more mm -hmm. people to come back and talk to about what you saw like it's just you know Brings that whole camp yep. atmosphere. It's a blast. That's what it's all about. Heck yeah, dudes. <laughs> <laughs> Good deal. Hmm. Congrats, man. That's Thank a incredible deer. Man. Thank it you. really is. You'll be seeing the sunrise if we're out here too much longer. Yeah. We'll get them taken care of and cool them down and get a couple hours of sleep and then we'll get them back out in the morning and kind of recap a little bit more. It's been an unbelievable trip here in Nebraska so far, and I mean, we're just more than thankful. That might actually go better on backwards. Okay. Push my hair back once. That's it? Yeah, there you go. There you go. That dang hair of yours. I know. Okay, do it again. Let a breath out as you're lifting them up. Okay. Here we go. Okay. That was the entry side. So that's the front. Yep. That's one. That's the other. And they're both hit. Oh, that was easy. Alright. Sweet, dude. You sound like me coming off the nose that one morning. <laughs> We got a roller. <laughs> We're having issues. Feel that one in your lungs and your legs. Wow. That's why you practice your cardio, folks. That's a job complete. We'll see you in the morning.
Let's go home. 10, top, bed. Gonna be good. Well, it really happened. I was afraid I was dreaming. <laughs> yeah. I got up and walked to the back of the truck and he was still there. Yep. Now the shot was a little bit of a mystery on this guy. Yeah, I mean, I don't know exactly what happened. I mean, center mass, you know, perfectly broadside and went through, right through him. Through both lungs. I mean, we Pretty just weird. an incredibly tough deer. Yeah. You, know, you hear stories about that from time to time. And I guess that goes to show you can never be too careful following up on right. a deer unless right. you actually see it fall. I guess that brings up a good point in the strategy of, of stalking that buck. You can't go slow enough. The, the one risk that you have is that the buck gets up. But I, I remember at one mm -hmm. point thinking, there's nothing that I want more than just crawl in here. And even if he gets up before I get there, just know that I crawled in here right into his, you know, right into his yeah. grill. A couple times I started to move and I was like, no, you got to slow, slow down, down yeah. because just one little mistake where you make a little bit too much noise or, or he catches movement and it's all over. It was interesting, Logan and I were talking about all the reasons that he might have been bedded there. And it actually sets up pretty well for him, even with him bedded facing into the wind for the most part. He's got a creek right at his back. He's got the road right there. And if anybody's walking or, or driving down that road, he can see him super easy. He's, yeah. They're going to be skyline. And people probably don't approach him very often coming across that creek. I mean, we didn't really want to cross it. Yeah. I mean, we never did cross it. <laughs> so... He think, I think that he thought that he was pretty safe there. Seemed like he made a mistake yesterday with him bedded facing into the wind, and that's ultimately what made yeah. made you know the call of like, hey, yeah. we got to try it. You then, remember what your initial thought was? That's a big buck. <laughs> and then I got to looking at him more, and I was like, that might be like a really big buck. Yeah. And I and he just moved, and then when I got when I crawled back and got the camera, and I got zoomed in on him, and I could see. Like, yeah. I was like, oh, okay, that that is a nice buck. And well, it's an incredibly nice buck yeah. for public land in Nebraska. The typical deer that we've been seeing is kind of like the one that was with him. Yeah. You know, something yep. that size, two-year-old mm -hmm. type deer. Yeah, I mean, talking about hunting on a limited time schedule, I mean, people have probably seen that our hunting tactics, I would say, are fairly aggressive. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I, think, I actually think for a lot of people that... Um, you know, in, in my, if I would have heard about this a couple of years ago, I'd have been like, okay, like that seems crazy. But, you know, upon bumping a lot of deer in the last few years and continuing to go back to those areas and, and trying to learn something from bumping that deer, you know, it's been a process to get to the point where it's like, if you bump one and he feels comfortable, he, he did win in that bed if you bump him. And I think that there's been a lot of hunting media over the last 10 years that have said, hey, don't spook deer, yeah. public, private, whatever. Yeah. And I think that even if I was hunting on private land, I'd be doing these type of yeah. tactics. I, I, I really do, because if a bedding area is secure enough and a buck has felt comfortable enough to, to live there until he's, you know, a mature buck for that area, he, he's got a lot of confidence in that mm -hmm. area. He's going to yep. come back more than likely. And that's two seasons now that we've done a tactic almost identical to each other here in Nebraska. Yeah. Last year it was with a wind bump. When we wind bumped, we got in there and we scouted the whole thing. That was so you purposely yeah. were trying to spook deer out of there. Mm -hmm. And in this situation, you drove by that day, yep. not anticipating spooking the deer out. Right. But from that information... Here he is. Right. And the other thing that I think is really important was the day that we went in there after we bumped these deer, actually crept up, saw that other buck come down into that bedding area. And in the process of trying to figure out how to hunt those deer that night, we were able to kind of scout that whole bedding area mm -hmm. from a distance. We'd get on high points, we'd crawl up, peek at it, look at the way the land laid, and just really understanding that. I think it was super important as well. You know, every time that you're walking around the woods, especially around a bedding area, you know, be looking for little funnels, be looking for any any little trail, creek crossing, whatever it may be. Because last night I was talking, like there was two or three different setups in that bedding area that I was thinking about last night. And then mm -hmm. finally I just decided, 
I'm gonna get up on that high point and just glass down in there and then make a move from there based off of where you know I feel like deer are moving within the bedding area. Yeah, attention to detail, man. The yeah. little things like that. Yep. Well, when we came to Nebraska, did you ever have any expectation that we would run into a, a buck like mm. this one? I thought maybe we would see one. Yeah. You know, like you guys saw one last yep. year. And I thought maybe we'd see one like that this year, but this was the, the deer itself and then the hunt, the way it played yeah. out. Um, I could have never dreamed that up. It was incredible. I feel really, really fortunate to, you know, just be able to get out and hunt with my friends on public land. Being at deer camp, we got corn dog and hot dog down the road here. Man, I cannot imagine a better first oh. five days Unbelievable. to the deer tour. Unbelievable. Ted. Ted knocked one down last night as well, and he had a good couple couple days on public land. What, two? <laughs> Are you serious? Are you kidding? Whoa. No way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, don't, they don't cause double trouble for nothing. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. On that sweet shed, too. Uh, All right. The guys just stopped by, showed us their awesome mule deer bucks. Pretty sweet. Didn't even know Luke got one. Got camp cleaned up, got it all in the vehicles here, and now that we're about to leave, we're gonna do what's most important. We're gonna measure the hoof of this buck. Now, there's no rules here, as always, but we're gonna just measure the width at the fattest part, which we got about a two and a quarter inch hoof there, which is pretty impressive. We think that we got a pretty good one here. Now, we're also gonna go the length. I think we go till, yeah, we'll shoot for where about the hair end the starts there. So we've got, I'd give him about a three and a half. Unbelievable hoof, great buck. You know, it's not about the antlers for us, we just like coming out and having fun. You know, our buddies are here. Chance and Brody left yesterday, had a good time, so we're gonna hop in the vehicles, go get, grab some lunch, head on home. It's a good time in Nebraska. You leaving your deer head here? Yeah. Just had to get that dramatic walk away, you know. Just had to get that dramatic walk away if we're gonna take this with us. And probably this hook.